Hello YouTube, this is Keith Kevin Ken. How are you? This is Kevin. I'm Kevin of Keith Kevin Ken. Call it Keith Kevin Ken because growing up I had two brothers, a younger one, an older one. We were all two years apart. K-E Keith, K-E Kevin, K-E Ken. So everyone called us, even our parents, Keith Kevin Ken. They, they didn't know which one they were talking to, so we learned to uh, answer to Keith Kevin Ken. That's why it's called Keith, Kevin, Ken, and a uh, loving tribute to my two brothers. I'm the only one, though, with the YouTube and the Instagram. Talking about Instagram, this is another daily dump deconstruction. What that means is what you're looking at is what I'm carrying today. Today is Monday, April 18th, 2016, and it's over 80 degrees it's going to be over 80 degrees today in the east. Monday, April 18th, 2016. I know you're probably not watching it on April 18th, especially not on 2016, but I do that because I do this every single day. If you haven't checked me out before, hit that subscribe button because we do this every day and YouTube will let you know when it's uplinked. I have a playlist of a bunch of knives being discussed and caressed that's over 60 deep, maybe hit 70 by now, so go check it out. Anyway, um, it's called a pocket dump deconstruction because this is my pocket dump for today. I took a picture that looked just like that, posted it on Instagram, at Keith Kevin Ken, just like this YouTube channel if you like to follow. Turned my iPhone 6S Plus over to video and now it's time to do the deconstruction where we talk about what's in my pocket and play with some knives. Today is Monday. Oh, it's a work day. I try, you guys. I try to be positive. I hate Mondays. I really hate them. Anyway, that's my... So everything in my pocket just is there to make me feel good. That's my Rolex Datejust, which I just love. The cigar of the day, I always have a cigar of today to celebrate the day. Either celebrate the good things that happened or celebrate the fact that it's over. <laughs> today is a special Cuban cigar, my Hoya de Monterey Epicure number two. Oh man, what a wonderful smoke. Bought a box of these. Ah, just love it. Um, let's see. The wallet. Is a Mont Blanc real thin wallet. Love my thin wallets and my little notepads. My coin of the day, lucky coin. Uh, I have a lucky silver coin, one ounce silver coin that I carry with me all the time. It's an international coin. I collect silver coins. I collect a bunch of things. In this case, it's the U.S. Mint's uh, FDR coin, presidential coin. Uh, came out, I don't know, a couple of years ago, a year ago, sold out real quick. It's a one ounce coin, commemorative coin of FDR, um, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, president in the U.S. And I use that as a lucky piece. My grandfather always carried a lucky silver dollar. And I remember that because he always bought me, listen to this, penny candy at the store. Yeah, they used to have penny candy. And they used to have pure silver dollars <laughs> that you could actually use at the store. Anyway, that's another rant that we'll not go into this morning. Um, today is a blended scotch day. So here's the deal. A lot of people, a lot, like five people have been asking me about this flask. It is the perfect flask. It's a wonderful uh, size. It has glass filler. It's just perfect. And they asked me, where did I get it? And I went on the internet. I'll tell you, I picked this up 25 years ago. Used to go to London a lot on business. 25 years ago, picked it up in London at this little shop that had a lot of cigar stuff, and I just loved it. I've been carrying it ever since. Uh, this is what it says on the bottom, just a big G. I tried Googling G London flask and got nothing for it. Um, so... All I can tell you is I got it directly in London a couple of years ago. I'm sorry, guys. I just didn't have, I didn't think I'd be on YouTube. In fact, there was no YouTube. <laughs> so 
So I apologize for that. Um, the pad underneath these knives that I'll move right now is a, uh, I call it vintage because it's over 20 years. It's a uh, coach, um, nice little pad with nice little coach paper. The pad is great leather. It'll last forever. I'm running out of those little nice little coach notepads. I bought a bunch of them. So uh, I'll probably have to make those myself. Shh, don't tell coach. Now let's talk about the knives. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, it's one of my collection. It's a Copa. It's a Spyderco Copa. They call this one Gold Pearl. Do you see why? Can you see it? Can you see that gold in that pearl? It's nice and shiny. Oh, man. So here's the Copas. Here's what the deal is with the Copas. Um, Spartaco set out a couple of years, several years ago, to make the collection of the definitive gentlemen's folders. Every three or four months ago, I wasn't around to collect them when they first came out. I wish I was. So I've had to go uh, in the aftermarket to pick these up. They have 16 of them. It's a set of 16. All of them have the same profile, the VG10 steel, the 2.4 inch blade, the, the stainless um, uh, bolsters. The difference is the inlays. They're all exotic, all kinds of exotic woods. They also have carbon fiber. They have this pearl. They have a regular pearl. They have all kinds of different things, 16 different uh, uh, inlays and they're just beautiful they all have the exact same profile like i said the vg10 steel that spydeco leaf blade the back lock um that same clip it's just a wonderful knife look at the choil look how big that choil is on such a small knife very usable wonderful gentleman's folder not only is the series limited to 16, but each of the pieces are limited to 600. So there are only 599 of these gold pearl copas still out there living in the world. Took me two and a half years to finally get all of them. I finally got <laughs> a blue turquoise Copa, that was the last one. Two and a half years and a lot of money of searching. I just needed to get the series and I did. That's my keychain knife. Ooh, fancy keychain knife. Like I said, horrible Monday. I'm gonna have fun with my carries and that's a classy carry. That's one of those carries you can caress in your pocket. Sometimes I throw it onto my desk. I can just caress it and look at it when I feel like throwing someone through a window or up against the wall because they get me upset on a Monday. Are you like me? There's always someone in the office that just wants to ruin everyone's Monday. I don't get it. I don't get it. Anyway, uh, that's the Copa. My medium carry is just one of my favorite knives. I'm going to have to track down the other two of these. This is the uh, Sabenza 21, the small Sabenza 21. 2.9 inch blade. That's what I love about sub small Sabenzas. Chris Reeves, no dummy. That three inch is the length that restricts a knife in a lot of U.S. communities and overseas. So it's 2.94 inches long, as close to that three as you can get it without being illegal in some areas. I love the plain Jane, all tie, of course. Wonderful, perfect Chris Reeve construction with that Chris Reeve integral um, frame lock. I always say Chris Reeve integral frame lock. Spotico always says it on their knives too. Chris Reeve created the frame lock. He invented the frame lock. And of course, this, the reason I love it is it's classic, but then it has this Devin Thomas ladder Damascus. Oh, look at the spine of this ladder Damascus. I really love it. For me, I'm not a heavy user. I spend most of my time in an office. I just love carrying three knives, okay? That's the answer to your question. It's just because this old guy loves carrying them, and I've got them, and it makes me feel good.
No huge philosophy of carry. Nah. It's just, I like them. And the Damascus blades are fancy, but they also do some good cutting as well. Devin Thomas, Ladder Damascus on that body. I think they have, I'm, I know they have a raindrop Damascus as well as um, the basket weave Damascus on a plain Jane body. I have to track those down. When I get money, when I recover from paying taxes this weekend, <laughs> I'll start tracking it down. They also have a large one. I have a large one with ladder Damascus, but I think they have a large uh, 21 in the other two as well. Oh, I just love it. As you can see, I don't want to stop. Every time you pick it up, every time it just feels like butter like butter and then i told you i just want to feel good safe covered and so i picked the sabenza 21 large sabenza 21 with that serrated edge it's a combo edge half serrated half plain edge on that 3.6 inch s35 vn steel you know, this really epitomizes what Chris Reeve <laughs> calls the Sabenza. Sabenza is Zulu. It means work. And man, this is a working knife. I discover, I know that everything I've discovered, because I just started collecting two and a half years ago, so everything's new to me. And I started with my Chris Reeve collection, which is kind of sizable now because I fell in love and lust with Chris Reeve knives. I just found the serrated. I hadn't seen them. I hadn't seen a lot of pictures. So, of course, I had to pick up the large and small Plain Jane serrated knives as well as the uh, Micarta inlaid ser serrated knives. If you know of any other serrated knives, uh, comment down below. I don't know of any others, but I really like it. Really handy. Look at that. Minimal serrations, but it does that wonderful serrated job if you need to cut cord or anything string or whatever oh man that is the carry folks that is my instagram actually it's just spread out because we just went through it that's it it's the copa that's called gold pearl on the inlay that is the chris ray small sabenza 21 with that Devin Thomas Ladder Damascus and that large Chris Reed 21 with that combo blade. I love those little serrations. That's it. That is my carry. That's what you'd see on Instagram at Keith Kevin Kim. But you want to know something? This ain't Instagram. No, it's not. Oh, man. I'd pick this up to carry. I wanted to carry it as my medium knife. This is called the Spydeco Worker. The Spydeco Worker. This was a sprint run from Spydeco a couple of years ago. It is green G10. It has that little needle <laughs> nose, but it's thick stock. You can really use it, which I really love. I believe it's VG10. Let me take a look. VG10 steel. That back lock. The blade is 2.8 inches under that three <laughs> inch mark. That maker's mark, can you make it out right there? Yeah, that's Sal. The Sal is the owner of Spartaco. He made this. Now, why is this a sprint run? By the way, Spartaco sprint runs mean it's a limited edition. They make Ele uh, they make 1,000 or less knives. And it's first come, first serve. They're gone when they're gone. And then you just have to go into secondary marking. And of course, because they're limited, they get marked up a lot. I saw this come across and I had to have it. Sprint Run Worker. Not as fancy as some of the knives that I have, right? Especially the Sprint Runs. Not all that fancy. But here's why I bought this. I hopped on it. I could not wait to get it. The worker, while it may not look all special to you guys, is a very special knife. And I'll tell you why. 
and I'll use the original. Look at me shaking. <laughs> I'm such a knife nerd. <laughs> I just got like <laughs> jingles in my spine. It's just stupid. I've owned this for years or so, but I, I just, I love it. I, I just, I love the history of it. This is the original. This is Sal's original worker. And the reason that this worker is so important. So first, I thought about carrying this because I haven't. I picked it up. I got ready to carry it. I, I'm trying to go through my cases and at least let some knives breathe. Then I went, oh, it's a sprint run. Oh, and then right next to it is this one, the original. And so I decided not to, but I wanted to talk to you about it briefly. Here's the why this worker is so important. Look at the clip. I love the clip. Still trying to get a patent on the clip. This worker is important because, folks, this is the very first knife from Spyderco that had the Spyderco hole. Sal wanted a one-handed opening knife. He wanted a knife that, whoops, whew, thought it was going to cut me there. He wanted a knife. You see how smooth that was? He wanted a knife with that strong back lock that could really work hard and with a hole where you could open it with one hand. And you could open it with one hand whether you're left or righty. I don't know, I can't open anything with my left hand. Anyway, you can see that. Very first time on this Spyderco worker, very first time that they had the hole. By the way, this has Gen 1 steel. That's when you know it's a real old one because that's one of the early steels that Spyderco made. Gen 1 steel, Spyderco used. So that's the first thing, that's huge. This is, of course, their brand, that Spyderco hole. This is the very first knife that did this. I was so lucky to get one of these in perfect condition. That's why I was worried when it dropped so fast that it would cut me. It's so sharp. It's just perfect. It's just perfect. The person before me knew exactly what they had. Now that clip, you notice I mentioned, oh, patent pending. This is the very first knife. First knife, listen to me, first knife to have a pocket clip. Yeah, very first knife to have a pocket clip. This is a real historical knife. And Spyderco is that kind of knife company. Did you know it? Didn't know it, did you? First time with the hole, you know, it had to start somewhere. This is the first one, not their first knife, but the first knife with the one-handed opening hole that Sal invented. And then, of course, that clip. The first knife, first knife, not just Spyderco, first knife with a pocket clip. Oh, I love that. So now you know why I hopped on getting that limited edition, that Sprint Run Spyderco right there with VG10 steel. And that's why it's a Sprint Run, because it took after the wonderful worker. There is another original worker with a plain edge but I'm just, I'm just happy to have that. Gen 1 Steel, oh, a bit of history, you guys, on a Monday. And you wanna know what? That gave me goosebumps. That's when you know you have the fever, <laughs> the night fever. Some of you know what I'm talking about. So there you have it, folks. This is the pocket dump deconstruction for Monday, April 18th, 2016. I really appreciate, if you could thumb this up if you enjoy the video just to see the Sprint Run and the original side by side of the Spyderco worker. Ah, that made me feel good even though it's a Monday. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Be a part of our community. We're just here to have fun. We're gonna see a bunch of knives and uh, you'll, you'll know when they come up. Every time I upload something, YouTube says, hey, Keith Kevin Ken just up upload it. I appreciate it. You guys have a perfect day. Keep those pockets full of man stuff. Goodbye.